In this video, we'll have a look at Cinemachine and how you can use it to create awesome camera behavior in your game. We'll also try to use it with Timeline to create a cool cutscene sequence. Well, before we get started, I just want to mention that I've recreated the Brackies site, so it should now be much faster and prettier. You can check it out at Brackies.com. All right, let's get started. So here's a simple scene using the Lou character from the Adam demo, and of course, a main camera that currently points towards this character. And we want to use Cinemachine to bring this to life. Well, Cinemachine isn't part of the editor by default. So we need to go to the asset store, search for Cinemachine, click the first one here, it's free. And we need to download and import it. The download should be really quick and you can just hit import. And now you should see a Cinemachine folder in your project. Then we want to select our main camera. And here we want to add a new component. Now we can go under Cinemachine and select the Cinemachine brain. We don't need to adjust any settings here, but now this component will link up all of our camera settings and the transform to the Cinemachine system. And now we're ready to get started. So the first thing that we'll do is go to Cinemachine and create a new virtual camera. You can see that this now creates a new game object in our scene with a Cinemachine virtual camera component. As with a normal camera, we can now move this around as well as rotate it in order to position it correctly. And you can see that whenever we have the camera selected, we have these guides to help us position our camera. For now, we'll just ignore these. So basically what we can do now is adjust this virtual camera to any position that we want and then Cinemachine will put our main camera at the same position using the same settings. This is cool because it allows us to create multiple virtual cameras and position them around our scene but right now our virtual camera is static so if we go ahead and hit play we can see that our character moves right through it. We can change this by giving our virtual camera a target to follow. We can simply take our Lou character and drag her into this slot. Now by default this might position your camera really weirdly. It snapped ours all the way to the back here. That's because we need to go under the body. This is where we adjust the position of our camera. And here we have a follow offset that's currently set to negative 10 on the Z. Let's go ahead and adjust this to be in front of the character. Let's also move it up on the Y. And now we can play with these to get a nice position on our camera. Then when we play the game, our camera will automatically follow our character. You also see that our camera responds to all of our character's movements. This is nice, but I definitely want our camera to act smoother. To change this, let's go into the body and let's increase damping. This means that it will take longer for the camera to adjust to new position which will give us a more heavy and smooth camera feel. I'm going to set the X and Y damping up to something like 6 and I'll keep the Z damping to 1. That's because I want our camera to follow our character pretty tightly on the Z when he's moving forward but I would like the changes on the Y and X to be more smoothed out. If we now hit play you can see that movement is a lot smoother on the X and Y. So it's really easy to get your camera to follow a moving target. Our character moves using animation but you can use the exact same method for tracking characters that are controlled by the player. But right now we are only tracking the position of our character. Let's try and go to Cinemachine and create another virtual camera. Now we can use our scene view to find a good angle on our character. We can then make sure to select the camera and inside the scene view we'll press Ctrl Shift F. You can do the same by going game object and selecting align with view. I use this method all the time for finding good angles inside the scene view. Now this time we don't want the camera to follow the position of our character. We want it to stay in place, but we want it to always look at our character. More specifically, we want it to look at the chest of our character. So I'm going to take loose body here and drag it into our look at target. And you can see immediately that our camera snaps in place. Now if we hit play, Cinemachine will show our first camera. You can always change between what camera you want Cinemachine to display by changing the priority. Higher numbers means higher priority. So if we wanted to show this second camera instead, we would simply amp up our priority. I'm just going to set this to 15. So if we now hit play, we can see that our camera always looks towards our character. And we can of course adjust the way that this is done as well. To do that, we go under aim. Here we again have the ability to offset the camera. We can also dampen its rotation and of course we have a bunch of framing controls. We'll have a look at these in a second, but let's first increase damping on X and Y to say 4. Now when we hit play we should see that camera movement is a lot smoother. But the main strength of Cinemachine is to easily switch between cameras. To do that we can use Timeline. To open this we'll go Window and select the Timeline Editor. Let's drag this to the bottom. To learn how to use Timeline you can watch my separate video on this subject. Or you can just try and follow along here. We now want to create an empty object for all of our timeline data. Let's right click, go create empty and let's call this timeline. Let's reset the transform. And now at the bottom here, we can hit create. This is going to create a playable for our timeline. We can call this cutscene. And this makes sure to set up all the components that we need for our timeline, as well as a basic track. We can just go ahead and delete this track. 
Instead, let's go in and add an animation track. Here we'll drag in our Liu character. We also right click and hit add from animation clip. Here we want to select Liu's walk animation. And now we can use our timeline to scrub through Liu walking. I'm also just going to make this clip longer, which means that it's just going to be repeating. Now we're ready to add a cinema sheen track. To do that, we can simply drag in our main camera where our brain sits, release and select cinema sheen track. This is where we'll place all of our individual camera shots. Let's right click, hit add cinema sheen shot clip. And here we get to choose what virtual camera we'll use for the shot. I'm just going to drag in our first one. And you can see now that during this part of the clip, we'll use the first virtual camera. We then right click and add another cinema sheen shot. And this time let's drag in our second virtual camera. You can see now that one once we get to this shot, Cinemachine cuts to the new virtual camera. So this is already really, really cool. And we can easily use this to start creating our own cutscenes. Let's try and decrease the duration of our first shot. Let's have it switch over to our second shot. Let's also decrease the duration on that. Let's try and hit play to preview it. So that's already looking pretty cool, but I still don't think the framing is right on our second shot. Let's try and select it. Let's open up our aim section and now let's try and change the composition of this shot. So the main thing to know about here is the dead zone. That's the tiny square in the center. What this means is that any movement from within this zone will not cause the camera to rotate. So you can see if I move our character back and forth here, our camera stays still. It's only once he moves outside of this zone that the camera starts rotating. You'll also notice that the tracking point actually gets pretty far away from the dead zone. That's only because of our damping. If we were to decrease damping to zero, you'll see that our camera will always rotate to make sure that our tracking point is within the dead zone. Now I don't really want a dead zone for this camera. I wanted to follow our character with a constant movement. So I'm going to take our dead zone width and height and decrease it to zero. I do want a bit of damping though, so I'm going to up this to 4x4. Four four. Now you can see that if we hit play, our camera will try and follow our character's movement, but it will currently try and place him in the center. To change this, we can change our screen X and Y. This will allow us to reposition our focus point on the screen. So I'm going to drag it backwards here and maybe a tiny bit down. Let's play it back and see how it looks. Now I like that a lot better, but I still think we are missing a shot. Let's go to Cinemachine and create a third virtual camera. Let's also drag our timeline here to the top so we can always know where it is. And let's now select our third camera. Of course, this is currently not being shown inside of the game view because it has a lower priority. Luckily, we can always click solo in order to preview a particular camera. Now we'd like to create kind of an over shoulder shot. And so I would like this to follow our camera. As we've done before, we're then going to take our little character and drag him in under the follow slot. I'm just going to aim the camera myself so I'm going to collapse this section and instead open up body. Here we can again adjust the follow offset. I want to zoom in quite a bit, definitely move the camera up and also move it over a bit. Because we currently don't have a look at, we can of course rotate the camera in any way that we'd want. And once you're happy with the framing, let's go ahead and disable solo mode. Then let's select our timeline. Let's right click, go add Cinemachine shot clip and let's add in a third virtual camera. Let's move forward in time. And again, I want the Z damming to be one, X damming to be four and Y damming to be four. And let's see how that looks. Really cool. Let's decrease the length of this clip to fit with the animation. And we should see that our cutscene now plays nicely. But that's one more feature in Cinemachine that could really help this pop. I'm of course talking about camera blending. Right now, when we transition from the second clip to the third, we do that using a simple cut. Instead, let's select our second camera and let's simply drag to extend it onto our third camera. What this will do is procedurally animate the position of our camera in a way that it looks over his shoulder. Much cooler than a cut. So now if we try and play the game, we can view our entire cutscene in sequence. Awesome. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future one. I think Cinemachine and Timeline, especially when bundled together, is a really cool set of tools for designers. And it's definitely a step in the right direction for Unity. I expect to see a lot more short films made with Unity because of these tools. If you make something cool, definitely share it with me on Twitter at BrackySweet. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in September. And a special thanks to Judaman, Hans Hoftoon, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, Zid Jabal, Jesper Mikkelsen, James P, Thomas Vorley, Superman the Great, Cyborg Mummy, Jason Latito, Aaron, Robert Bund, and Nick Lang. If you want to become a patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash You guys rock.